What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. And whichever platforms you're listening to this on, I want to let you know I really do appreciate you. And if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for being subscribed. But if you are not subscribed yet, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on YouTube while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button because it's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. So let's just go ahead and brighten up the place. Now, let's get into this podversation slash reality chat. I did not plan on talking about this, but it really just pissed me off. I was listening to DJ Richie Sky. He is a content creator on YouTube and he does a lot of reality show content. I've been subscribed to his channel, following him for several years now, and I really like his positive energy. He's just one of those people that's, in my opinion, pretty unbiased. He just tells the stories and the situations, the news and the updates, reality show wise. And and I really like his lighthearted energy. But when I hear someone speaking about Martel that they're, you know, they're trying to be kind and jovial towards him. I'm just like, I get it. You, you just really want to be completely unbiased. So I understand but I can't stand Martel. So when people are that way, when it comes to speaking about him, I just feel like, okay, you go ahead and be lighthearted and then just let everybody else do the dragon. So <sighs> DJ Richie's guy, he's reported that based on the clips from the Real Housewives of Atlanta's trailer that has come out, and I listened to it and I'll put a link to that video in the description box and I listened to it, Martel has words about Candy and Todd, and he's coming for them, talking about their height. And we already know how Martel is. When anybody sees him for who he really is, they know his M.O., and they call him out on things, instead of just shutting up and and being silent, he wants to not only try to make those people to look like liars, but he wants to speak negative about them. And that's clearly what narcissists do, right? So he wants to speak on Candy and Todd and calling them short. In the clip, he's speaking to Sheree and they're talking about an event that they're going to be going to. And I guess Martel had already heard some things that Candy said about him and so you know Sheree's like well Candy and Todd they'll be there and he's speaking about them and then he has the audacity to speak about their height to say aren't they both like three feet tall how small of you how small of this douchebag who has the nerve to talk about somebody else's height that based on their revenue, if they were to stand on their wallets, they would be a whole lot taller than Martel is. And he is so small and so broke and so broken. And he really believes that anyone is buying the BS besides Sheree. They're not. She says that he has BDE. B as in boy, D as in you know what. (laughs) E as in energy. And and that's the thing that's really sad about Sheree. At her age, I don't like to come for women in their age, so that's not what I'm doing. But I'm just saying, they say with age comes wisdom, and it's really sad to see that at the age that she is, she really hasn't garnered much wisdom where it, where it involves men. Because... To be with a man who, in this very present moment, like literally right now, in this very present moment in time, is battling it out with his ex-wife. And she went through similar things with her ex-husband, even though, I'll be honest, I'm not saying that she didn't deserve child support, but I, I don't know if she really deserved to get all that she was trying to get from him, just based on some things that I learned over the years. And with that being said, even though it looked like Bob was doing her dirty in court and all of the other things like that, 
I believe that there's a lot that we were not privy to that we didn't know because I really didn't understand back then how a judge could not award this woman and her children the home that they were staying in. She claims that Bob let the house go into foreclosure. But, you know, I just, I I consider those things and I just see how her life has just progressively gone down. And yeah, she's in the Chateau now, which Kenya called a few seasons back Chateau Thelma (laughs) because it's been reported that that home is actually in her mom's name. I don't know how true that is, so I'm just saying what Kenya said. So that is alleged. I haven't seen the paperwork, I haven't seen the deed, and I definitely have not seen the mortgage. So I do not know. But they in this clip that DJ Richie Sky is talking about on his video, on his channel, it's you you hear that Kenya has things to say about Martel, Candy has things to say about Martel. These people see him for who he really truly is. And I'm still, to be honest with you, baffled with the fact that this man has made it onto this show. I really don't understand that. But based on Andy Cohen and his messy self and him liking some dark eye candy, if you get my drift, I believe that it's just for his intents and purposes so that he can drool behind the scenes and get his rocks off. That's my personal opinion, just being beautifully honest. Based on things that he said on the reunion of The Real Housewives of Atlanta when it was reported then that Sheree was allegedly dating the sucker, okay? So, you know, and at that time, Andy was like, you know, talking about how good he looks, and I'm like, ugh. But anyway... He's trying to say negative things about Candy and Todd. And then (laughs) he had the nerve to call Todd an opportunist. Now, listen, that has been said about Todd before. But listen, Todd and Candy have been married for many years at this point. Candy is who she is and she was who she was before she got with Todd. And Todd may not have been a celebrity or he may not have even been someone someone that was as wealthy as she was but Candy knew that and she decided to get with this man right wrong or indifferent as much as Mama Joyce didn't like him maybe still doesn't like him just has grown to tolerate him a lot more because of the years that they have been married and the children that they shared together so for the sake of peace and Mama Joyce continuing to be supported which we know Candy is not going to cut off the support for her mom but I'm just saying Martel has a lot of nerve to call anyone an opportunist. And (laughs) we are looking at you right in this moment in time where you are trying to get records that you do not have the right to have about your ex-wife to know what her logins and passwords are for social media accounts, for knowing what types of investments she has, the accounts, uh, login and password information for those things. Like, who do you think you are? What ex has the right to have that type of information? They have already been divorced. The situations that are going on right now with regards to the children has nothing to do with Melody's personal social media accounts or their you know, their revenue, which he really has none except for the check that he gets cut from being on Love and Man Transville by Carlos King. And so now that this clip is out of him speaking negatively about Candy and Todd, I really hope that they respond to it. I really do hope that Candy is going to say something about it. She's pretty much known for speaking her mind when it comes to people who have said things about her like that. And um, I'm sure that if she does, she would probably do it on her YouTube channel. She gets a lot of views over there. So it's like, yeah, let me just make some money off of these clowns that want to speak negative about me. So yeah, I'll respond to it. So I really hope she does. And if she does, I definitely will be back to speak about it. And I hope that she and Todd do a speak on it, talking about this loser, having the nerve to speak negatively about them. When, like I said, if they were to stand on their money, (laughs) <laughs> they would be a whole lot taller than this N-word. And the fact that he had the nerve to call Todd an opportunist. 
you don't even know these people and you really should be like thanking your lucky stars that you made it onto the show, thanking your lucky stars that you were able to meet up with somebody like Sheree who really lives in a state of desperation. She really doesn't have much going on in her personal life. So this has given her a storyline. I mean, think about it. Prior to this, what were people calling her? The bone collector where she was talking about other people's situations or talking about the chateau. I mean, you've been in the chateau for a few years now. You got the basement finish. Kudos. You're still in it. You haven't been foreclosed on. I mean, it's been reported that she doesn't pay a lot of her contractors and pay bills. And she even said it on the reunion of Real Housewives of Atlanta when she was asked about it. And she says, well, if I hire someone to do something and they don't really do it the way that I want them to do it, why should I have to pay for it? It's like, girl, you really have absolutely zero integrity. So I just can't. She honestly, I believe she and Martel deserve each other because in my personal opinion, I feel like they both have trash bag tendencies about themselves. So be together, stick together, but it's just not a real relationship. And I do believe that she has caught feelings, whereas Martel really just sees her as a business opportunity. He said it on the Love and Marriage Huntsville episodes that have aired thus far that he's not all in with Sheree. And I don't care if people say, well, oh, well, the episodes that are sh- sh- um, show now, those were filmed before, but he is definitely now all in with her. And so that was just how he was feeling because they were just really starting to see each other at that point. Well, I don't buy that because in the previous season, at the end of it, no doubt, and, you know, nonetheless, he was being asked about he and Sheree at that point. That was months ago. So I don't buy that. I really don't. So I just feel that there's more to come. I really am hoping that with the news that came out about how the judge was just, in my opinion, a bit biased towards men, I really do believe that he saw Martel for the loser that he is, but because he is, or she, I don't even know if the judge is male or female, but I'm just saying more father-like in terms of who they like more. Because there are judges that are not unbiased and they have favorites. It's a very real thing. It, it really does happen. And I believe that that is someone that's more prone to be on the father's side than the mother's. But because he's such a loser and he really doesn't have that much going on, I just believe that the judge took that opportunity to try to swing at Melody and try to call her out for her being difficult to co-parent with when the judge really knows nothing about how hard it has been to deal with Martel. You know, they probably are looking at it like, well, you were married to this man for all of these years. So all of a sudden now you can't deal with him. But that's the sad part about it. I really don't believe that that judge knows the extent of how hard it has been for Melody to be in that marriage with him, finally getting the courage to break free and now having to be forced to deal with this man. She cried about it with her mother a couple of seasons ago on one of the reunion episodes. She was backstage and she was crying to her mom and she was just like, I just really wish I could leave Huntsville. I don't even want to live here anymore, but I'm forced to be here because of the children. I can't move away. And at that time, and in that space, I really felt like she felt trapped. And I understood where she was coming from. She loves her children. She doesn't want to leave them behind. She really just wishes that she could just... I don't even believe that she would even be on the show anymore if she didn't... I won't even say had to be on the show, but I believe, even though some people say, well, she doesn't really have much going on, like the others in terms of the marriage, the marriages, but I'm probably going to speak about that in a separate conversation. For all intents and purposes, she really is, I believe, the show because she created it. Now, I know Married to Medicine has gone on without Mariah, but I've said this before and I say it again, that I really miss Mariah Huck being on Married to Medicine. But she created the show. She's the EP of the show. And she deserved to have a place on the show. That's my personal opinion. 
Um, and she's also still married to her husband, whereas someone who is not married to medicine and not even married anymore, Quad, is back on the show again. But I get it. This conversation isn't about them. I'm just making a point. I just believe that Melody is ultimately going to win the war in this situation, but to have someone like Martel, who is now going on this internet press tour, in my opinion, with the executive producer of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Carlos King, I I don't get it. It's like, what does Carlos King like about this man so much? And listen, you guys let me know your thoughts about that (laughs) in the comment section. I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but it just begs to question for me, why is it that I feel he goes so hard for Martel? That last season's reunion when Carlos was crying tears for Martel and saying how he just really feels that he misses his family so much. I'm just like, why are you crying for this nigga so much? Like, what is it about him that you like so much? And then I start to scratch the side of my head and I'm like, hmm. Because he was trying to do at least a little strip tease on that um, Carlos King after show thing that he had last last season. Anyway, guys, that, I turned the channel after that, so I didn't watch it. So, guys, you let me know your thoughts about that all in the comment section. Check out the video by DJ Richie Sky. I have a link to that in the description as well. So, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I'm Beth, and I'm just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye.